I recently published a video showing a bad USB HID injection attack on an ICS. I wanted to show you that an attacker with physical access can secure the persistence, get a shell and exfiltrate secret data. Today I will give you a breakdown and explain the steps of the attacker. Hi, my name is Marcel Rickzen and I'm an OT security consultant with a master's degree in automation engineering. In my ICS home lab, I try cyber attack scenarios and open source tools against real industrial hardware. Do you want to support me? Subscribe to the channel and share this video. Before we get started, let me tell you about practical industrial control system penetration testing. I have created this course to teach you pen testing on simulated industrial controllers. This means you can get started right away and don't have to buy expensive hardware or attend expensive, boring seminars. After you have learned the basics and set up your virtual lab, you will deepen your skills with the pen test tools step by step in five attack scenarios. And after that, the final challenge awaits you to prove your skills. Link to the course is in the video description. The attacker has network access and physical access to the industrial controller. First, the target ports 21 and 23 are scanned with Nmap, which are initially closed. Then the attacker pulls out a Wi-Fi duck. This is a bad USB with Wi-Fi access point. Basically, bad USB are microcontrollers with the function of a USB keyboard. And these are recognized by the computer as Human Interface Device or HRD. And these are always classified as trustworthy. The attacker connects the Wi-Fi duck to a power bank and then connects to the Wi-Fi access point and opens the management web interface. A matching attack script for this attack scenario is selected from the stored ducky scripts. Here a CX9001 industrial controller is to be attacked and the script is selected. Ok, let's take a quick look at the function of this attack script. First, the Windows terminal is started. To do this, the Wi-Fi duck presses the Windows key and the R key. This opens the run window. The last entry must be first deleted with the delete key. Then the terminal is started via cmd.exe. First, the script maintains the foothold of the attacker in the system. With this command, the user operator is created with the following password and all access rights. Via the echo function, this string is written in the auto start file. Even if the real system operator notices and deletes this rogue account, it will be added again after the next restart. Then the script tries to start the network services. First, Telnet is activated and then the FTP server. The attacker has access to both through the account that has just been created. The attacker selects the script and activates the autorun function so that the script is executed the next time the bad USB is plugged in. Then the attacker plugs in the Wi-Fi duck and the just shown script is executed. Now port 21 and 23 are rescanned and now the target has active FTP and Telnet services. First, a Telnet connection is established. With the credentials just created with the script, the attacker has a shell on the device with full admin rights. To exfiltrate the secret files, the attacker connects to the FTP service, since it's not possible via Telnet. Again, the credentials just created are also valid for FTP. First, the attacker displays possible FTP commands and the running operating system. Ok, let's assume that the target files are located at this location. Using the mget command, the files can be transferred to the attacker's machine. After a successful transfer, the attacker can open the secret data. In this demonstration, it's only a recipe for a delicious breakfast bar but in the case of industrial espionage, for example, the PLC program or recipe data could be exfiltrated and reconstructed via reverse engineering. Thank you so much for watching. Support me with a subscription and share this video. And if you like, consider supporting me on Patreon with a coffee.